So sanitizing input is when you fix the input to make it safe for use. Um, and there's generally two approaches you can take, and there's a good approach and a bad approach. Basically, what you can do is either start with, well, everything that's not this we remove, or you could have like a like a list of things that you remove. Now, it's much safer to start with a list of this is what we want to allow because there's less room for you making a mistake. So as a developer, there's a good chance you won't have thought of everything that an attacker could possibly think of. And so you're better off saying, well, okay, you're only allowed to add, enter like alphanumeric, so like letters and numbers um, into this string and spaces maybe. Um, and um, you know, there's not that much that can go wrong. But if you let them enter all sorts of other special characters in, then you know there are, it's possible that they are able to um, you know do more with that. So if you are um, you know if you can remove script tags, for example, that's a good start. But there are other ways that attackers can get JavaScript into a website. Um, so, for example, on attributes on an image that's like an on-click action and things like that. Um, and so you're better off just controlling very tightly what they're allowed to input. Um, and when you're validating input, like validating that they've put something valid in, it, it needs to happen on the server. From a security perspective, um, once it's left the client, then you know what happens in the client is kind of irrelevant in terms of checking that they're not sending something malicious. So you need to um, you know, really check it in both places. You can check in the client so that before they even it gets sent to the server, you can say to the user, no, you're not putting something, you know, you're know, you not allowed to send that. But an, an attacker can circumvent those kinds of client-side protections, um, you know, just by you know, crafting it as a link or um, you know, sending it from within some HTML code. You know, there's lots of ways around client side validation you know it, or it could be as simple as like just um, modifying the client or using a proxy all sorts of things so there's there could be um checks at the client side but it needs to be at the server side from a security perspective so on, when it comes to the server it gets checked before it gets used um uh, although if you have like actual logic inside the client, then you can check there as well before you use it, like on a um, you know modern um, you know React type system, for example. Um, <clears throat> so one way you can prevent it is use safe encoding methods. So you know, for example, if you've got a, an ampersand, you can send you know ampersand amp semicolon instead, which is the HTML for an ampersand, so that it gets rendered as a, as as an ampersand rather than um, you know as the code version of that um, same with angular brackets um, or chevrons um, instead of um, you know the less than sign you put ampersand lt semicolon um, instead of the greater than uh, and then instead of double quotes or single quotes you know you can use the html encoding for that um, and for you know slashes and things. So, <clears throat> but instead of trying to have this list of things that you replace, um, you should use libraries that are um, you know that, that do this for you, so that make it less likely that you um, have just haven't thought of something, for example. Um, and so, if you have something that's poorly sanitized, clever attacks are still possible. So, for example, without recursive sanitization, one pass might end up with a malicious string. So, for example, you could have embedded script tags inside each other. So, when one gets removed, it actually creates a new one. Um, and so, you know, th there's a lot to think about in terms of how you sanitize safely. One pass through, if it's generating a new string, might end up creating a new malicious string. So, you have to be careful. Um, and so, and as, as I said earlier, there are multiple methods of injecting JavaScript and not just via script tags, so you need to be careful of that as well. Um, there are, you know, there's quite a lot of information out there in terms of the different ways that you can um, prevent uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And, you know, a lot of it comes down to sanitization and validation, but you need to think about where that needs to happen 
um, and exactly like what sorts of things to allow in a safe way. Um, and you know, that's outside the scope of this video, but there are lots of really good resources out there, including um, this uh, on the screen, I believe it's from uh, OWASP, um, information that they've got about cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So you should go and check out the OWASP website and there's lots of information there. Um, I guess one of the takeaways is that you should use safe libraries and use frameworks that help to take care of this stuff for you. Um, and just think carefully and defensively about every time you're using information that comes from the user. So in conclusion, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, it, you know, it's a really easy programming mistake to make. Uh, it's the most common security vulnerability that exists at the moment and he has huge security ramifications. So, you know, you should be careful, make sure that you're being defensive and doing lots of sanitization and validation of everything that is from an untrusted source, which is basically everything.